we were sent there to uh, provide perimeter security to this radar installation. Basically, this radar station was tracking supposedly drug aircraft that were exiting in and out of the Peru and Bolivian uh, airspace. They came to us and said, look, you know, we got, we got a situation where we, we have one, an aircraft crash that's possibly friendly, and they need us to go and, and secure the crash site. I was on guard duty that night, so I was already up, and it was my shift. We have 12-hour shifts, 12 on, 12 off. Uh, so we all went out that night. We got up, I don't know, 3 or 4 in the morning and headed out in Humvees. We had about five or six Hummers, and we drove to where we needed to go, and then we, from there, you know, we had to hump through the bush. So we got there, I don't know, six, seven, just, just when daylight had just, just started to get light. And, uh, well, we found the area really easy because there, there was a huge gash in the land where, where something had crashed, and it, it, it didn't break anything. You know, you know, I don't know if you've ever been to a crash site. Everything was burned, and it was like, like if you had almost cut like a, a warm butter with a knife, I mean it was just, it's like it's it's like something on fire or had ener or some kind of energy like a laser almost had had like gutted. I mean it was really strange. And anyway, I was I was in the front with Sergeant Allen and Sergeant Atkins. We were up front, and we were we were point basically, and we were like I don't know 10, 20 meters ahead of everyone else, and basically we were the first ones to see. The object, because basically this thing went up the hill and then off into the side of, 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 of the ravine or the ridge. This is about a 200-foot ridge at least. It's just, it was buried in, a, in, in the side of a cliff. This is a huge ship, and you know I, I used to be into sci-fi movies when I was a kid, but this is nothing like I'd ever seen. And when I first saw it, you know, I was scared. It scared the end of the heck out of me. You know, I didn't know what to do, and we all climbed down, and. Uh, it was it was buried for about a 45 degree angle and into the side of the the, the cliff there the, the the ridge. It was dripping this serp like uh, like serp viscosity this liquid. Uh, it was everywhere. It was weird. It was a, a, a purplish green color. But every time you looked at it, you saw a different shade of, of greenish purple. It was strange. There was a, there was one light on it that slowly went around and it, and, and the machine I could hear it. I could hear, I guess, because it was still functioning, and it had like a like a, a hum to it, like like a really bass, like say if you unplugged an amp from a guitar, that kind of, mm, you know, it was really really, you know, it was really deep, and it kind of fluctuated, and then finally it just cut off, and everything just seemed to stop. So I could see the back of it, and there were these large vents. Well, that, they look like vents, sort of like a fish gill. On the back, again, this, this, this liquid that had come out of the ship was, it got all my camis and, you know, it, it, it discolored them and ate them almost like acid. And then it ate some of the skin off, excuse me, the, the hair off my arms. But basically, when I was down there with the ship, there was three holes. I'd assume that they were hatches, but I, 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 there's no way to tell. And it was half open. But uh, I felt this presence. And it's real strange. I guess it was almost like I think they were trying to communicate with me, like I guess telepathically. It's really weird, and I don't believe in it, in any of that stuff. But anyway, it was I could I could hear like it's like basically sitting in your car and turn on like an AM station. That's not that you know it's just white noise and just turning it up really high. And that's what I heard when I when I first got in there. Uh, this is pretty crude two dimensional drawing, but this is jungle here. This was the craft, and it, it was embedded. Uh, these right here are the hatches. These two objects here. This one was the one that was half open, was 10 meters in width and about 20 meters in length. It looked metal, but it, it didn't. It didn't have any reflection on it, man. I mean, you know, the, the the sun's coming down, and you know, I could see the different the different shades of the craft after we climbed back up. The uh, the, the I think the DOE Department of Energy people were there. They knew about it, and I don't know why we went there still to this day. But anyway, I was arrested. Uh, I had all my gear taken from me by men in black camis, had no, no name tags. They, they were older men, probably in their thir late 30s or 40s. How long was I at the site? Uh, probably about 15, 20 minutes. They said that, you know, that, 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 that I was, they were cussing at me, saying that I was a dumb asshole. And that, why, don't you, why don't you people ever you know, pay attention to orders, and you weren't supposed to be there, and you're not supposed to see this, and, you, you know, you're, you're going to be dangerous if we let you go and all this stuff. You know, if we just uh, 
took you out in the jungle, you know, they'd never find you out there. And I'm like, well, I said, yeah. And he's like, you got to sign these papers and you never saw this and I don't exist and this situation never happened. And if you tell anybody, uh, you know, you'll, you'll just come up missing. And